Jesse Roger, thanks for dropping by. This plant came up as part of the um, first part one of the Project Orchids update two, where in part of the process is to have a good look at the plant and discuss its progress and everything. And it was discovered at that particular point that there's rot. Um, basically, <laughs> by standing back and rethinking about what was actually done here, I can tell exactly what's gone wrong and um, it should be relatively obvious but it wasn't at the time. This is lots of little pieces, this is not one plant, it's lots of little pieces. And what do we not do with small parts of orchids when we're trying to recover them? We don't put them in big pots do we? We put them in the smallest pot we can get them in. And that's not the smallest pot is it? If it was a single plant, it would still be a bit big, but as it's lots of little plants, each piece is now in a huge pot and it's failing. So it's got to come out and I've got to be very, very careful because one piece in here not only has a rotten pseudo bulb, it's liquid, so it's bacterial. So I'm just going to separate these pieces out. Now that is brilliant because this is the soggy piece here. There's liquid in there if it hasn't already drained out and that's soggy as well and both of those soggy bits are on the same piece. Um, unfortunately first thing I'm gonna have to do is separate them. Yeah it's very wet at the base I'm pretty sure that's leaked. If that's leaked then it uh, may well have progressed beyond saving but we will separate it and then take a look at what we've got left. And I may make the decision to not keep this piece on the principle that it was attached to a bacterial, a piece with bacterial rot. I'm just getting the sheaths off to see what I'm left with. Is this worth keeping? It's actually had a bloom spike in its past. Right, um, it's not a brilliant piece, is it? But the new growth, if it hadn't had sheaths on there, does have signs of new roots. These are useless. So we'll put that to one side. This piece I'm not going to bother with because if I take the soggy um, pseudo bulb off, I'm just left with a growth. It's a pity because it's a good growth. It's a nice healthy looking growth, but it's got no roots. And if I, if I detach it, is that going to come off clean? Let's see what's left if I take it off. Is that worth keeping? It's not a bad piece, is it? No roots. However, that root's alive. That bit's not there. Oh, it's debatable whether that's worth struggling with, quite honestly. Anyway, that's another piece. Now this piece here has a leafless bulb that's hard, that are good. Then it's got a bulb with a couple of leaves still left on it. That's good. And then it's got its new growth attached. So this is a two and a half bulb plant, basically. I'm taking the sheaths off because I want to see what's at the base of the bulbs. Are there signs of new roots? Because that would determine a definite keeper as opposed to dubious. So the, again, it's, it's just about at one or two live roots here where it's branched. These are gone. It's not a good piece, but it's the best piece so far. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a good piece though. Now what have we got here? Now this is a similar piece, so it's got an old bulb. Um, however, that bulb's got a lot of black on it, so I want that off. Let me see what's left. It gives us another bulb, and our new growth again. And yet again, no roots. That, that root has started to branch, so it's tried. But um, this is just gone. There's nothing here worth having. 
debatable whether that's worth bothering with. It's debatable whether any of this is worth bothering with, quite honestly. Um, again, a lot of black around that area there, so that's coming off. And we end up left with one old bulb, shriveled, desiccated, and a piece that looks like it may have even attempted to produce some roots and failed miserably. Uh, decision. That's got a reasonably plump bulb with a backup. To plant that nicely with this part of the plant sat at the base of the media, that's going to have to be buried a bit. See, it's a climber, it's headed off upwards, which means that would have to come off. So do it now, don't talk about it. That would give me something I could plant. Maybe. Badly desiccated. Not happy. Oh, and that bit's got scale. Right, you're out straight away. <laughs> what about you? That bulb's not bad. It's not desiccated, it's still a bit plump. Uh, I wonder if this whole plant's got scale and that's part of what its condition is. See, if I see a yellow leaf, I want to know what's inside it, because it's often scale. No, it's just an old leaf. So no scale on that piece, and it's a relatively plump bulb, and signs of places where roots could grow. That's two. I'm not potting that. That's desiccated. So we've got, unfortunately, even though that's a lot of media to get rid of, it's had a bacterial infection in it. So it's got to go. There's no point in trying to recover that. So most of the plant's going. And what I'm left with is two tiny little pieces. And those two tiny little pieces will go in one pot as small as I can get it. And we'll see if they'll grow on. And um, to keep that upright, all I need to do is strap the two old bulbs together and that will leave the new growths at the same height, just touching the media. So that's the plan. Prior to that, we have had an infection here. And as far as I'm concerned, um, <laughs> when you get a bacterial infection, there's not a lot of point in getting the fungicide out. <laughs> what you need is something that kills bacteria. Um, and the only thing I've got that I would risk putting on relatively small pieces of plants like that is the hydrogen peroxide and let it have a good fizz around those bases and around those roots and the base of the plants and hope that does the job. So uh, I'll get that done and then we'll get it quickly potted up. I'll be back. Right, I'm doing something a bit different. I brought the camera in a lot closer. What I don't know is whether it will stay in focus um, as I'm not manning the camera, if you see what I mean. It's on the tripod, but we'll see, because some people have said the camera's a bit far back and they can't see what's going on. Something else I will explain as well. Um, I have a nervous habit, which I'm aware of, some of you may have noticed, which I don't like to see on camera. If I've got nothing to do with my hands, I wring them, and I find that incredibly annoying. Now you might know why I've often got a cup of coffee or a glass of wine in my hand. It's to stop me doing that, not necessarily to drink. <laughs> As some of you have already noticed, uh, I stand there with a glass of wine in my hand and don't even take a sip. Um, I wait till I've finished. I'm not, not going to go to waste, is it? Anyway, this is not coffee. This is actually the um, cocoa husk into soak. But it was such a small amount, I couldn't be bothered to get a jug out. I thought I'd just use one of these. You too could have one of these on the merchandise store. <laughs> but what you can't have is one of those, which is the limited edition that I did for my... Because that's been taken off. <coughs> Hence, limited edition. It's all in the name, you know. Anyway, I've got some small bark. This is all going to be small. We've got some small cocoa husk. Big pieces taken out. Which has been into soak. So uh, we'll get all of this out. Whether I'm going to use it all or not, I don't know, but uh, we'll get it all out anyway. You can go in the sink. Some charcoal. 
for reasons still undecided, undetermined, don't care, I've got some that's going in. It doesn't need to be much because uh, if what we do works and these start to grow, they're obviously not going to be in this pot long enough for the media to go off, are they? Because they'll need a bigger pot. <laughs> going to need a bigger boat. Right, so uh, that's the mix. About half and half with the cocoa husk and the small bark. So the cocoa husk will help keep things hydrated without it staying too wet on plants that have virtually no roots. No crocking because these are going in deep. So small amount. Yeah, dirty hands. Now, got two new growths. Should we head them off in opposite directions? No, let's have them going in the same direction. That way, um, the old bulbs can go at the back. Even though it's only a small pot, they can still go towards the back. But what I do need to make sure is that the growths on the front are at the same height, so that they don't sink in. That's about right. Now, I've bought some stakes out. I may or may not need them. Don't need to worry about squashing roots, really, do I? I haven't got any. None worth speaking of, anyway. So, I want these new growths, albeit that they're maturing, which may mean they've missed their chance to produce new roots, just sitting on the media. I don't want them in it. We've already had some rot in this, you know, where these came from. We don't want any more. So I've got a flipping great lump there, I? Right? typical, right where the roots are going to come out. Let's have some small stuff there to replace it. Right, so now are you going to stay upright? Yes, they are. Oh, good. You can get away without staking. But what I am going to do is just put a clip around those two. Just put a grabby clip around those two bulbs just to hold them still. Sort of like that. That's not going to work. Why not? Let's try a different type. That's better. Right, so there we go. And that is because I haven't actually mentioned it. Although I have still got the... Have I still got the tag somewhere? Yeah. This is Odontoglossum Navium. Or Navium. Depends how you want to say it. It's N-A-E anyway. And... Um, obviously called Ancidium now, but once was Odontoglossum. It was actually one of the many Odontoglossum species that have uh, become more obscure as time has gone on, simply because they've been reclassified. So what we're hoping for then is new roots on those two growths and another new growth on each piece as soon as possible. And if we can get that, it may recover. It may not, you know, but this is one of those, you've got nothing to lose by giving it a go. So that's what we're up to. Put our tag around the back there so it's not in my way. And then we'll see what happens. So even though that's got wet cocoa husk in it, I am actually going to water it now. Because I, I just want the base of those plants to stay moist, not soggy, moist. And we'll see if it recovers. And as far as our um, project orchids are concerned, the pot full that you saw at the beginning of this video is obviously now replaced by that. So when we get to December and we come back to have a look at how the Odontoglossum naevium is doing, we'll be looking at this. And it may not even still exist, because these might fail, in which case we won't have that plant when we get to December. I think we will still have these two pieces in December and I think we will have some roots. But I've been wrong before. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.